My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. Questions on the Born Harbour cycle come up quite often in exams, and the reason is examiners can ask a whole range of different questions on this topic. And this one, they're asking which reactions are exothermic. So we know this one is exothermic. This one is not exothermic because you're breaking a bond, therefore it's endothermic. You've got to put energy in. This one is exothermic. Chlorine atoms definitely like electrons. And this one is exothermic because you're getting a positive ion and a negative ion combining together to form the potassium chloride solid. So that's exothermic. So we've got one, three, and four are exothermic. And there we are, one, three, and four exothermic. When you're asked about lattice enthalpy and you're expected to give either a description, an explanation, or a definition, then the important things that need to come to mind are one mole of a solid compound or one mole of an ionic compound and gaseous ions. And also, if you can, remember that in going from the mole of a solid compound to the gaseous ions, energy will be absorbed. And when you have that, those ideas in the back of your mind, you go through here and you see B. The energy absorbed when one mole of a compound is converted into gaseous ions. That fits perfectly. A, the energy released with one mole of a solid compound is converted into gaseous ions. No, energy is not released when you convert a solid compound into gaseous ions. Energy is absorbed, so that's wrong. These two are clearly relating to standard enthalpy changes of formation. The mole of a compound is formed. Mole of a compound is formed. So B is the answer. The energy absorbed with one mole of a solid compound is converted into gaseous ions is lattice enthalpy. In this question, the examiner is simply checking whether you understand what it means by first electron affinity and second electron affinity, and what is their relationship with delta H for this particular reaction. The first electron affinity is simply O gas plus E goes to O minus, and that's a gas. That's the first electron affinity. So they're saying that's one minus, that's, they're saying that's minus one, four, two. The second one is taking this and adding another electron to it. That's the second electron affinity. And they're saying that that's plus eight, four, four. And this is clearly the sum. Simply the sum of those two equations, therefore it's the sum of that, which comes to 702 and it's positive. Therefore it's this one. And again, it's a kind of question that maybe needs 15 or 20 seconds, but certainly not much more. The two factors that affect lattice enthalpy for an ionic compound are ionic radius and ionic charge. The higher the ionic charge, the higher the lattice enthalpy. And this is simply because the ionic charge means that the ions have a greater attraction towards each other, and therefore the energy involved in that attraction will be greater. In the case of ionic radius, the smaller the ionic radius, the greater the charge density and the ions will have the opportunity to get closer together. And so because of the greater charge density and the closeness of the ions, there is a higher energy associated with that situation. Therefore, the combination of ionic radius and ionic charge that results in the highest lattice enthalpy is a high ionic charge, small ionic radius. When assessing which ionic compound has the greatest lattice energy, 
you're looking at two things, the ionic charge and the ionic radius. The first thing to look at is the ionic charge because that has the greatest effect on the lattice enthalpy. And the larger the charge, the more the lattice enthalpy. So therefore we can say that magnesium oxide and calcium oxide are going to have larger lattice enthalpy than sodium fluoride and potassium fluoride, simply because there's a 2 plus ion there, a 2 minus ion there, a 2 plus ion there, and a 2 minus ion there. And those have the greater effect than the 1 plus ion, 1 minus ion, 1 plus ion, 1 minus ion. So that's the first thing. So the answer is either A or B. The next thing to take into account is the size of the ionic radius. And the smaller the ionic radius, the greater the lattice enthalpy. So we end up with A, simply because in this case, magnesium has a smaller ionic radius than calcium. So magnesium oxide has the greatest lattice enthalpy than all of these four. This question is very similar to the previous one. And when asked about lattice energy, the first thing to take into account is the ionic charge. And therefore, magnesium oxide has larger ionic charges than sodium chloride and potassium bromide. That one it has the greatest lattice energy. Then, in order to determine the order of the other two, the sodium chloride and potassium bromide, you look at size of iron. And the smaller the iron, the greater the charge. So sodium chloride, sodium is a smaller iron than potassium. Chloride is a smaller iron than bromide. Therefore, sodium chloride has a higher lattice energy than KBr. Therefore, the order is that magnesium oxide has the highest lattice energy and potassium bromide has the lowest lattice energy. Go down here and you find it's here. So the first thing to do is to take into account ionic charge and then take into account ionic radius. When it comes to the Born Harbour cycle, you just have to be able to do complete Born Harbour cycles for a number of products. Sodium chloride is important, magnesium chloride, sodium oxide, and magnesium oxide. If, if you can do these four, then you can do the full range of salts that they can give you in an exam. And it is important simply to be able to sit down and say, okay, magnesium oxide, and then write the whole of the Bourne Harbour cycle, with the result that this type of question becomes easy. You see immediately that one must be the enthalpy of formation. And you go down here and you only find one enthalpy of formation, and lo and behold, this fits with two, which is the enthalpy of atomization for sodium. And so there we go. An extra thing I want to say is that I have seen here in different textbooks, I've heard different teachers and different internet websites use enthalpy of sublimation. You just have to be aware that that is a possibility, simply because you're going from sodium solid to sodium gas, and that is a sublimation activity. I've also seen it as the enthalpy of vaporization, which I understand is not strictly correct, because vaporization is really going from a liquid to a gas and not from a solid to a gas. And you may wonder why there is this range of names, and the reason is that sodium solid, under normal circumstances, you would say sodium solid goes to sodium liquid when heated, and then goes to sodium gas when heated even more. And from the point of view of the Born Harbour cycle, this one is simply ignored. It's a convention. This one is simply ignored, and these two enthalpies are added together. So you end up with a solid going to a gas, and they are atoms, therefore it's the, the total is referred to as the enthalpy of atomization, or you're going from a solid, you're going to a gas, and it's uh, the enthalpy of sublimation. However, 
I do recommend you to be able to complete the Bourne Harbour cycle for these four. And if you can do those four, then you can answer any question they ask you about Bourne Harbour cycles. Here we have another question referring to the Bourne Harbour cycle, and yet it's a completely different question from all the previous ones. We're comparing the theoretical lattice energy and the experimental lattice energy in order to determine covalent character. The theoretical lattice energy is calculated from electrostatic principles and based on purely ionic model for the compound concerned. The percentage difference from the theoretical is an indication of covalent character. And clearly AGCL has a higher covalent character than NaCl. Or you could say it the other way around, NaCl has higher ionic character than AGCl. Two different ways of looking at it from the ionic character side or the covalent character side. This particular question is asking about increasing covalent character. So we know AGCL has the highest covalent character, NaCl has the lowest, that gives us C as the answer. AGCL has greater covalent character than LIBR, which has greater covalent character than NaCl. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please so you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.